This is the Washington Times front page for Wednesday, August 31st, 2022. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. Some senators say the Biden administration is still allowing Afghans to reach the United States without checking them through a key Pentagon database that could help weed out national security risks. Stephen Dynan reports approximately 81,000 Afghans have made it to the U.S. under Operation Allies Welcome. That includes about 77,000 who were airlifted out of Afghanistan in July and August of last year, and 4,000 who have arrived since. Of the 77,000, the Pentagon Inspector General reported that as of last November, 50 of those were later found to have been flagged in the Defense Department's automated biometric identification system. The IG said less than 10% of those flagged could be located at one point. The audit called that a potential security risk. Analysts warned that if the development of information eventually fingers someone as a security risk, it might no longer match the information about that person in the United States. After months of defending major cities from attacks and ceding ground to Russia in the south and west, military reporter Mike Glenn reports Ukrainians are taking the fight to the enemy. They've launched assaults in recent days along the front lines in the occupied Kherson region. Analysts say it may be the beginning of a counteroffensive in southern Ukraine. In its daily summary of the fighting, the Washington-based Institute for the Study of War noted that even some Russian military blogs are discussing Ukrainian advances along the southern end of the crescent of territory now in Russia's control. A clear picture of the state of fighting, however, is impossible to confirm. Kherson was the first major Ukrainian city to fall after Russian troops advanced into it from the Crimean Peninsula during the earliest days of the war in February. Ahead of the midterm elections, Democrats are linking their Republican opponents to violence and fascism. Susan Fericcio reports they've been tagging the GOP in tandem with President Biden, who will deliver a primetime speech Thursday to call Republicans a threat to the soul of America. He'll deliver his speech a week after telling a crowd in Rockville, Maryland, that the GOP had begun to embrace semi-fascism. Republicans say the rhetoric is aimed at deflecting attention from rising inflation and other economic problems. They frequently use similar extremist labels on their Democratic counterparts. Mate Fertility is reaching out to abortion facilities nationwide with a pitch to fill the void created by the fall of Roe v. Wade by partnering to offer assisted reproductive services, including in vitro fertilization. Valerie Richardson talked with CEO Tracy Keene, who said the underserved infertility market is a natural fit for her company. Abortion clinics are typically staffed by OBGYNs, nurses, and medical technicians, the same professionals needed to run fertility clinics. Last week, Mate Fertility reached an agreement with Allegheny Reproductive Health Center in Pittsburgh. Founded in 1975 as an abortion clinic, the independent center also offers gynecological care, prenatal care, and contraception services. And finally, rank-and-file FBI agents say they can't see how FBI Director Christopher Wray stays in his position long-term. Kerry Pickett reports FBI whistleblowers talking to Congress about corruption and retaliation say in disclosures that Wray was often notified of problems within the Bureau, but never took action to resolve them. In a statement, the FBI said, All employees are held to the highest standards of professional and ethical conduct, and we expect them to focus on process, rigor, and objectivity in performance of their duties. Allegations of misconduct are taken seriously, and referred to the inspection division or appropriate investigative body. Find all of today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app. And find us wherever you get your podcasts. Just search Washington Times in your favorite podcast app. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.